If you are curious about how to interpret your metrics and then use them to improve your open source project, this presentation and the practitioner guides are for you. In this first presentation, I'll talk about the practitioner guide introduction and how to use it to think strategically about which metrics are important, while also collaborating with the community to increase the chances that any improvements you make will be successful. I'm Dawn Foster, and I'll be talking about the Chaos Practitioner Guides. I've been in the technology industry for over 20 years, working mostly on open source. I'm a board member of Open UK and co-chair of the CNCF Contributor Strategy Technical Advisory Group. I'm also deeply involved in the Chaos Project, where I spend a lot of time thinking about how people can use metrics to understand how to measure and make improvements to open source project health and sustainability. Within the Chaos Project, we recently launched a series of practitioner guides designed to be used by people who may or may not be experts in data analysis or even open source to help them use metrics to improve project health. These guides are useful for people in open source program offices, project leads or maintainers, community managers, and anyone who wants to better understand project health and take action on what they learn from their metrics. Historically, the Chaos Project has focused on providing metrics, along with some tools to help people collect those metrics. But because every open source project is a little different, we avoided providing advice about how to interpret the metrics. The result was that a lot of people ended up with a pile of metrics that they didn't always know what to do with. We created the Practitioner Guide series to help solve this problem by giving advice for how to use metrics to improve certain aspects of open source projects. You still need to interpret your metrics in light of your project's specific needs, but we hope these guides will help you do that in a way that makes sense for your needs. We launched with this introduction guide and guides on responsiveness, contributor sustainability, and organizational participation. We also have more guides coming soon. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to using metrics to measure project health. Every open source project is a little different, and metrics should always be interpreted with the needs of that project taken into account. One of the best places to start isn't actually with the metrics, but by spending some time understanding the overall goals for the project. If the project is primarily driven by one organization or owned by an organization, you should also consider the goals for that organization. By thinking strategically about the overall goals, you'll be in a better place to decide what you need to measure to determine whether the project's achieving its goals. Open source projects generate a tsunami of data that can be overwhelming, but by focusing on the goals, you can develop a metric strategy that helps you focus on the metrics that matter most for you. One key to doing this well is an interpretation of your open source metrics. The real experts are the people who are involved in the day-to-day -day work on a project. So you need to collaborate with key people from the project since they can help you interpret the metrics and any trends identified in ways that make the most sense for that particular project. When deciding if something is a problem or a concern that needs to be addressed, your contributors can help to decide whether the issue might be a temporary fluctuation instead of a real problem. What else has been happening in your community, your project, your ecosystem? Was there a big conference, a major release, vacation season, or other things that impacted people's time to make contributions? It can help to overlay these on a graph to understand their impact better and if it looks like there's an impact, you might want to wait to see if the metrics rebound on their own after the temporary disruption before making any changes to the project. Once you decide that you need to improve in some particular area, it's important for this step to have buy-in from the community and project leadership before you start taking action toward making improvements. Not having support from the project could lead to changes being ineffective, disruptive, or even damaging for the project and the people contributing to it. The Introduction Practitioner Guide has so many more details, and it's designed to get you thinking about what you might want to measure and how to measure it. 
along with some general tips and cautions. It's meant to complement the topics in the other practitioner guides, which I'll talk more about in the other videos in this series. I hope this helps you get started with using metrics to improve your open source projects, and I hope you enjoy the other videos in this practitioner guide series. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you around the chaos community.